Hola, mi nombre es Ubaldo Reyes. Bienvenidos a mi canal Radio Física con Baldo. Este es el noveno video en donde analizaremos una herramienta matemática muy poderosa que utilizamos en el área de radioterapia para la evaluación de planes de tratamiento cuando trabajamos con planificación inversa, el cual es conocido como histograma dosis volumen. El objetivo de este video es analizar cómo los sistemas de planificación construyen estos histogramas dosis volumen, partiendo de los conceptos más básicos para que sea perfectamente entendido y correctamente aplicado en la evaluación de planes de tratamiento en nuestros hospitales. Sin más preámbulo, comenzamos. Dose Volume Histogram We'll focus primarily on three aspects in this video regarding a dose volume histogram. First of all, the definition. After that, we'll demonstrate how to make histograms and how we apply them to treatment plans. And finally, talk about what types of histograms are used in radiotherapy. The general definition of a histogram. In statistics, a histogram is a representation in the form of a bar chart of a number of events versus a variable grouped in intervals, which allows its analysis. Therefore, a histogram is a mathematical tool that allows us evaluate and understand more easily a tridimensional distribution of dose calculated by a planning system. Furthermore, in the video, we will reinforce these simple concepts. Once our definition is set, we will initiate on how to build a histogram and its most simple concepts. We are 19 people working in the tomotherapy area, and from all of them, we have registered their ages. Now, we'll classify them in intervals of 10 years, called bins. Each bin contains the number of occurrences of sources in the data set that are contained within that bin. Now, what we do is count and group how many of our co-workers fall into this category. The values we have registered are known as the frequencies. They are absolute frequencies because we are talking about three co-workers that have been registered under the classification of 21 through 30 years of age and five under 31 to 40 years of age and so forth. This is why it's absolute frequency. If we obtain percentages, 16% of the colleagues fell under the category of 21 to 30 years of age. 26% of the colleagues fell under the category of 31 to 40 years of age. And when we talk about percentages, we are talking about relative frequency. Each and every one of the concepts will help us give information depending on what we want to analyze. Further, we'll see more on this matter. To finish the histogram, we just graph the information. One side, we have the bins, and on the other, the frequencies. In this case, we can see them as relative frequencies. We can see now on how basic concepts can help us analyze our treatment plans. Before analyzing that, we should analyze the concept of a voxel, and then we'll be prepared to understand what we want to analyze. When we have a tomography, that tomography is made up of voxels that aren't anything but the smallest volume they can be divided into. If we zoom, in this tomography slices, we will see some squares, images made up of squares. Those squares in two dimensions are called pixels. But when we are talking about tomography, we are talking about voxels. And we have established the measurements of that voxel when we do the following. Firstly, the images of our CT scan 
in Secan Durango, we have a Simons tomograph installed. Two dimensional grid of pixels of 256 times 256. And we have selected a field of view of 50 centimeters or 500, 500 millimeters. If we divided those 500 millimeters by 256, we will get 1.95 millimeters. So the length and width of our voxels are 1.95 millimeters or 0 0.195 centimeters. The depth is a lot easier to obtain because it's just the slice thickness we have selected to get our tomography. In this case, 5 millimeters or 0 0.5 centimeters. Each voxel has a certain color considering a scale of grays. And that color is associated with certain house fill units. In the end, all of this together is what will form the image. Once this concept has been understood, we analyze the planning systems. They basically do the same process. They use a calculation grid. In this case, in tomography, we have three calculation grids. One that is coarse, one that's normal, and a fine one. If the one we are using is the thinnest one, it will give, a, as a result, a higher number of voxels of a greater calculation. However, a thinner grid will provide more accuracy. In the center of cancerología here in Durango, Mexico, as a protocol, we always use the fine calculation grid. When we are going to evaluate a treatment plan, we use inverse planning. We have a defined volume where the dosage, dosage will be applied and the system begins to make iterations in a way to generate DVHs. Every company's planning system that deliver linear accelerators use their own algorithms to calculate the dose of each of the voxels found in the grid. However, all of the systems show at the end DVHs that have, be, that ha have to be evaluated and the way it generates them is just what we'll see in the following. We begin the analysis with the simulation process we obtain, the tomography and the medical radiotherapist has countered a volume in the following way. This volume that will be radiated, which we'll name PTV, is where we are going to deposit the prescribed dosage. To simplify the example, let's have in mind that we programmed four radiation angles from 0, 90, 180, and 270 degrees. For this example, everything is inverse planning. After several iterations using our own algorithms of our planning system, we obtain a dosage distribution in the following way. And this is when we see something interesting. If we zoom in where the dosage is contained, we will notice that this volume is split in voxels and each voxel has assigned a number associated with the dosage it is receiving. In our example, we have a grid of 16 times 18 voxels, which gives us a total of 288 voxels for this area only. The planning system has to create a list identifying every voxel with how much dosage it's associated with. Do you recall the last example we made at the beginning with the years of age of our colleagues? Well, this is similar to the graph, but in this case, we will have one, on one side the voxel's number and on the other side, the associated dosage with that voxel. In the example, we only had 19 colleagues as a registered result. Now, in this example, we have only one slice and only this section, 288 values. In a complete treatment plan, the planning system handles thousands or millions of data. What the planning system will do is generate classifications, in this case, dosage intervals, 
which are nominated as bin. In our case, they will be intervals of one gray and it will count and group the number of voxels with that dosage, with that information the system is capable of generating a histogram, but this is not a dose volume histogram. It would be dose counts histogram. Have in mind that every voxel has an associated volume. If we multiply this volume amount with the number of counts that we have been already grouped, we now can have associated dose and volume. And finally, we have generated our first dose volume histogram called DVH. But the planning systems don't show us the bars on the graph, rather it shows a continuous line graph and this is known as differential DVH. Even more, moreover, as we are talking about volume in cubic centimeters, it is called differential DVH absolute. And on the contrary, if we graph the percentages rather than the absolute value, we obtain the differential DVH relative for every region of interest that has been countered, it will have a curve in our DVHs. As you can see, two real examples of differential DVH absolute and relative from the planning system where we can perfectly identify in the axis X the dose and on the vertical axis we can see on one side the volume in cubic centimeters which would be absolute and on the other side the volume in percentages which would be relative. Lastly, we are going to build the most commonly used DVH, which is known as cumulative DVH. A cumulative DVH is parted from a differential DVH, and it is built as follows. To the amount of voxels of each bin of the differential DVH, we have to add the amount of voxels that are to the right of the bin that are being considered. In this way, the volume that receives a dose greater than or equal to the indicated dose can be represented. The amount of voxels in the first bin will result in the total amount of voxels in the structure given, that all of the volumes receive zero dosage or more. With that information, we can graph a dose count histogram. However, let's not forget that every voxel has an associated volume. Therefore, this amount can be converted to volume units. And now we have created our cumulative dose volume histogram. Once again, the planning systems do not show us a bar graph, but rather a continuous line graph. But they both have the same information and since we are showing the volume in cubic centimeters units, we are then showing the cumulative DVH absolute. Now to finish, we will make our cumulative DVH relative, which is simply getting the percentage of volume for each one of the structures. We just graph that information. Final comments. Desde mi punto de vista, cualquier profesionista que esté elaborando planes de tratamiento, ya sea físico o dosimetrista, deberá entender perfectamente estos conceptos para saber cómo el sistema de planificación está construyendo los histogramas. Para cerrar la primera temporada de este canal, en el video número 10 mostraremos algunas características de los histogramas dosis-volumen que nos permitirán unificar la evaluación de planes de tratamiento en nuestras unidades de radioterapia. Espero este video sea de utilidad, denle like, suscríbanse a nuestro canal y nos vemos en el siguiente video. Muchas gracias.